Hey, Jennifer, how's it going? Wonderful. Good. You're here for the uh, class on contacts and tasks? Indeed, I am. Very cool. Well, um, my name is David, uh, David Hatton. I'm in the uh, Greater Lexington office. Um, so I'll be uh, showing you a couple of things here and there. So um, it looks like you're the only one on the call. So um, if you'd like, do you have any specific questions that you or, or specific things that you'd like to go over? Uh, sure. I mean, I am still feeling pretty, in my opinion, overwhelmed uh, with just putting contacts in. It is such a daunting task for me. And I'm just like, so how can we do this? Like, as a group? Is that a thing? Mm -hmm. um, it has the import option, but then I don't know how to work it apparently because the um, Excel sheet that it says you can download, I'm like, oh, so I, I still have to type them in individually, um, which is the same thing in my opinion, it's just putting them in individually into command by itself. Because I'm like, if I have to type each one individually here, on yeah. the Excel sheet to where I can't just import my items, then that is not, uh, yeah, it doesn't yeah. work for me. <laughs> I think it's just, it, I, it's very long. Gotcha. It's a very long process. Yeah, um, so we'll, we'll go over a couple of options that you have for that. Um, so the question I have for you is, do you have your contacts saved somewhere else, like on a, a different Excel spreadsheet or, or anywhere else like that? No. So I did oh. import them into my laptop so that I can, uh, from my phone, so that I could, mm. well, I thought I could do some type of merge or mm. something, some type of share to where I can do everything all together, but I have not figured that out, so. Okay. Well, we'll, uh, we'll cover some options for you. Uh, ultimately, if you can get them on your computer and if you could convert it over to some type of digital format, you know, it could be Excel, it could be, um, there are ways that you can pull data off of a PDF if you have a PDF. Um, but uh, I'll, I'll show you a couple of other things you could potentially do and, and see. What platform do you use um, for your phone? Is it iPhone? Is it Android? Android. Android. And that might even be that might even be easier. Um, I'm like I am an Android person. I don't. Yeah. Totally good. All right. Well, um, and uh, we have one other person on here, Nicole Green. Um, how's it going, Nicole? Hey, this is my first time um, meeting with you guys because I'm usually working during the day. Fair enough. Very cool. I'm a transitioning um, dual agent. Yeah, I'm a transitioning dual agent. So, um, cool. thanks and welcome. Um, thanks for welcoming. Yeah. Um, I appreciate that. Um, yeah. So, I've been using Command actually um, quite a bit because I've been trying to purchase my own home and I had to learn how to use it quickly in order to, to do that. So, um, I'm definitely, I'm definitely interested in learning. You know how to get things done quickly because it's it's been taking me a, a while to get those contracts or those documents filled out. So I'm definitely uh, eager to learn. Okay, <laughs> well, we're, um, I'm glad to have both you guys on here. It's not um, it's not as fun to to just be here by myself. I don't know if I was supposed to teach it anyways because the meetings are recorded. So sometimes I'll just go ahead and, and teach. Um, so it's good to have people here to talk to. <laughs> All right. Um, so we'll go, oh, actually, um, for, for both of you guys, what would you say your guys' level is in command? Do you guys feel pretty confident in your, in your, in what you can do or are you nothing, you know, brand fresh new? I mean, I'm a beginner, essentially. I've played around with it, uh, probably more recently. So I've, I've, I've been licensed for all of about 45 days. So I'm super new, um, but then I started out with a buyer client, like less than 24 hours after having my license. Um, and so I had to expedite some things. And then I guess 
kind of um, skip over some things. I don't know. I was on a team, but then I just recently went to support a day. So, um, but with my team leader, we kind of rushed over some things because I had the buyer clients. Um, so I've played with some things. I've created an opportunity. Um, like I said, I have about 50 um, contacts. Let me see. Yes, 50 contacts in right now, but that is nothing. Like it's, I mean, that's a little over 10% of the contacts that I have. So that's not a very good deal. <laughs> and I'm just wow. like, but so much to put in every single name and email and phone number and save and continue on. And yeah, it's a lot. <laughs> well, 50 is a start, that's for sure. <laughs> it's not enough <laughs> <laughs> all right let's uh let's go in i'll show you guys a few things here so we're going to talk predominantly about contacts but i'll also touch a little bit on tasks as well because that can be useful to to help keep you on organ uh, on track and organize and things like that yes so we'll click on um contacts here right off the bat we'll talk about adding contacts and we'll talk about importing contacts so um, right there add a contact put in the details here and, and you're good to go a couple of things to point out really you just need a name you don't really need anything else um, but it's it's good to have as much information as you possibly can um, that'll help you later on down the line even to the extent of having um, addresses put in there so that neighborhoods can be associated to the contacts and, and things like that, that could be very, very beneficial right off, off the bat. Um, you can add relationships. And really what this is going to do is it's going to add a new contact, um, but that contact is going to have a link to that relationship in the contact card. And I'll show you what that looks like, but you'll see like, oh, here's the person and here's their relationship, whatever that happens to be. It could be spouse, it could be father, mother, son. It, it gets pretty detailed, child of sibling, uh, oh, okay. sibling parent, uh, step parent, all kinds of stuff. It's really detailed. Um, so you can add those, relation, uh, add those relationships so you can see that in the contact card. Um, if you wanted to send something to the family, you could see all the family members, but it does also create a brand new contact um, in your database. So, you know, that's something to think about if you don't want to clutter your database with a ton of names that aren't necessarily related to the person you're directly working with, then you may want to not use the relationship. If you have two people who um, are in a relationship and they're buying the house together, you may want to have them both kind of connected a little bit um, so that you can keep that organized. Um, there's a few other things. You have your lead sources. You know, where did this come from? Um, so there's a, a few listed here, uh, different CRMs, uh, Facebook, different things like that. Um, this one's important to tags. Um, having a good tagging system is pretty important in command. Um, you know, and I kind of tell people when you're tagging your database, you don't want to just put tags about everything. You don't want to have a thousand tags because it, it just makes it look like a little messy and then you can get confused. Oh, well, I have these tags for these people and then these tags for these, but I also want them to be in another group and then it, it, can, it can get a little confusing. Um, so be pretty intentional about what tags you use. Um, if you can't think of a practical use of the tag, you may not want to do it. Um, don't just do it to do it. And I, I'm, I fall into that category Sometimes I, I over categorize things. Um, it's really easy to do, so I wouldn't uh, try and avoid over categorizing. Um, there's a lot more information you can add to. Um, it's, you know, phone numbers, email addresses. You could do um, your regular address, social media profiles. You can add here. You can do birthdays, home anniversary dates. And those can be useful later on when you're doing smart plans. If you want to set up a smart plan for their birthday or their home anniversary, um, you can do that and it's all in there um, for, for you to pull from. 
Um, there's the relationship again, you can add down here. Um, work, where they work, things like that. So a lot of different fields of information you could put in. If you're in a hurry and you just want to get names in there, you just need a name. Um, but again, I'd be as thorough as possible because that'll really help you out later. You, you don't want to um, go back and individually put in every single thing for contacts that you already put in individually, especially. Um, if you can get it in an Excel spreadsheet or, or get it pushed over, which we'll talk about in a second, um, that's that's good too but you also don't want to read you know go back and, and have to put in individual information for all those people so that's individually creating let's talk a little bit about importing so with importing um you you're gonna click on the import button right here and then you're gonna click on this blue text that says download now you have to use this excel spreadsheet to import they may update that later i know that there are um more advanced import uh, pieces of software, um, but uh, they, they are a little bit more complicated and hard to develop. So they may update it sometime in the near future. But as for now, we have this here. A couple of things to, to remember when you're filling out this Excel spreadsheet. If you have a database already, um, a lot of like contactually and all, all these, they can export into an Excel spreadsheet. And then really you just need to copy and paste each column over. Um, but you have to have a first name. Um, if, if that field is blank, sometimes it will break when you try to import it. Like, do it. it it'll mess up. And it's because you don't have anything in the first name field. Um, so you want to put something in um, first name. You know, after that, you don't really need anything. You could just have a list of first names and that should import fine. Um, but uh, again, you want to be as thorough as you possibly can. Another thing, you don't want to change any of these fields in the top. Um, it's a long spreadsheet. And so especially you know, with me, I like to simplify spreadsheets. And so I may delete fields that I'm not going to use. You can't do that. It has to be laid out exactly like this. Um, can't be changed, can't be edited, um, the names or anything. So just don't touch these top two fields and just paste everything underneath it. Um, there's a few other instructions that it'll say here. The CSV data format must be set to text when the file is saved. If any row is populated with information but does not contain a name, an error will occur. So that's kind of what I talked about before. Um, this, this top one, the CSV data format must be set to text. I haven't found that necessarily has to be the case um, because that, that causes some issues, especially with phone numbers because phone numbers can't, they can be set to text, but they, it can be weird. So I haven't found that to be an issue, but if you need to, if you click in the top right corner of uh, the Excel spreadsheet, you can actually come up here and you can set it to um, text right there. You just click that button and it'll set all of the cells in the entire spreadsheet to text. So if you're finding that it's not working, then you might, you might need to do that. But again, I haven't found that to be the case. Um, okay, now specifically with, um, with the, the issue that you had, Jennifer, you're trying to get your contacts over, but you don't have them in an Excel spreadsheet somewhere, sitting somewhere, which I would assume most people don't. I mean, I don't have a, an Excel spreadsheet with a bunch of names on it sitting somewhere on my computer. I mean, I do, but most people won't, you know? Um, so I, I don't want to go too much into how, how to pull them off of your phone because, you know, honestly, I'd have to do research, but I know that there are ways that you can take, there's a special file like on a Apple devices, it's called a V card, I think, but there are ways that you can export your phone database and convert it to Excel. Um, but I'm going to show you something else that you could potentially do that might be a little bit easier. Um, and, uh, the only, the only thing that I would say before doing this is it's, it's going to take all of your contacts over from your phone. Um, and so there may be contacts that you don't necessarily want. So you got to kind of weigh it. Do, do you want to try and export it and then sort through your database and delete the names that you don't want to put in and push it over? Um, if you have a huge database, 
Um, you may or may not want to do that. You may want to because you want to get rid of a lot of the stuff that's not important. You may not want to because it would take a lot of time. Um, and you can you could potentially use some kind of tagging system to just get rid of the ones that you, you don't want. But I'm going to talk a little bit about using PySync. Okay, so I'm going to click on my name here in the top right. And then we are going to scroll down to settings. Now, in settings, right, the very first page, if you scroll down, um, there's right here, this app and productivity called PySync. Now, just, uh, just for future reference, PySync is actually, um, it was bought out by a company called HubSpot. So we're not gonna have it forever, but I think it's not going away immediately. Um, but I think some sometime like the end of the year, it's gonna it's gonna be going away. But it will be replaced with another service that basically provides the same thing. But what PySync does is it helps two different systems talk to each other. Okay, it facilitates data transfer between two different. Systems. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on Connect Account. Now, if you have an Android device, like you said you do, uh, Jennifer and Nicole, what kind of uh, what kind of phone do you use? I have an Android also. Um, All right, perfect. That's um, easy. Samsung enough. Note. Yeah. Okay. So with with Android, most people when they're using uh, it, the, each phone is going to have their own contact database, but um, a lot of times we can use something like Google Contacts. Um, I I do use an iPhone, but uh, I predominantly use uh, Google systems. So I have on my phone an app for Google Contacts. And so all my contacts go into Google Contacts and it carries over through email. So uh, your KW email actually is a, a Google email account. So you could potentially do that. But what you would do if you had uh, Android is you could either export your database in Android and then convert it to Excel and push it over. Or if they're already in Google Contacts, you just make that link between commands and Google Contacts, and it will basically pull all of your contacts from your Google Contacts account and put them into command. All right. Now it's not going to have every single field because Google Contacts are going to have different, you know, like home anniversary date. Google Contacts is probably not going to have that. Um, so it's going to take just the main pieces of information, you know, name, phone number, address, thing, things like that. Um, and it will automatically sync between the two. Now it's not instantaneous either. So once you set that up, it may take a little bit of time before all the contacts eventually pull over, but that is a way that you could a little bit more easily um, transfer contacts over into your databases to use PySync. So I, if I click on that, you just choose an, uh, an account. Um, right there, I have my Gmail account. I could just put that and then it'll sync between the Gmail account all of those uh, contacts and then um, my command. If um, on your phone, if you go into your settings and you go into your email, you can turn on contacts and it will sync the contacts between your email address and your phone as well. So even if you had an iPhone or an Android or whatever, um, you would just turn on that, um, that email sync and then you can go ahead and do this, this system here. Um, so either way. Okay. Um, that's about it as far as adding context. You guys have any questions, any other questions about this area? Not for me. You are a lifesaver with this Google contacts syncing with KW command. Oh my goodness. I'm like, this just lifted like a thousand pounds of pressure off my shoulders to get this done. Good. Oh my word. Right. I'm <laughs> glad. Um, yeah, I found that to be the easiest way to do it. That's how I did it. And I tested it and it worked fine. The cool thing is, and actually now that you said that I, I'm, there's probably a couple of other things that, that uh, you'll want to know if you're going to do that. Um, when, uh, when that happens, there's going to be kind of a hierarchy of what's going to happen in that in that transfer, right? So um, when the data is coming over from Google, 
It's going to ask you if the data, if there's a discrepancy in data, who is going to win out? And you probably are going to want to put command on there because uh, as you're updating your database, um, command is going to have a lot more information than your phone is going to have. And so you're going to want to have command win out because, for example, if you have the home anniversary date put in, it's going to check both systems and it's going to say, oh, well, command has home anniversary date and that's new, but Google doesn't and Google is the primary location. So we're just going to delete it out. And so it'll delete it from commands, right? So you'll pull the data over using, um, using that PySync. But what I'd probably do if I were you is I'd let everything sync over to command, which is 100% sync over. And then I would turn that off, turn that connection off, so like turn PySync off completely. That way you're not going to continue to sync data over unless you want to. Yeah. Got it. No. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for me, I had my Gmail account connected and I, for me, I didn't mind um, because I'm not actually, I'm not an agent. And so I don't need all kinds of weird pieces of information that you guys do. Um, but it, it is kind of cool because if I add something to my phone, it would automatically add to command. If I added it to command, it would automatically add to my, my phone. So it was kind of cool having them linked, but um, you don't want data to go missing, and that can happen in PySync. And so if I were you, sync them over, turn that off, and then just work from command uh, from that point on. So, All right. Well, let's talk a little bit more about contacts. Um, the organization structure here in command, you can change it up a little bit. So you've got name at the front, and then you've got all kinds of columns here. And you can structure these however you want to by clicking this customize columns. And that's useful because a lot of people that have different priorities, right? So here are all the available columns. And then here is the order that you're going to see them in uh, on your computer. So you can add things and you can remove them. And we'll just add and remove from here, right? So then like update, if I remove it, you see it's gone. Oh, and now it's back. So you can drag and drop this column however you want to, and that's the order that they're gonna appear. So if I move updated to here, and we'll hit apply, then you'll see updated is now here, okay? Um, so really it's whatever's most important to you, um, you're gonna wanna make that uh, the order that you see them. Now, with that being said, you can create filters and you can apply them and then you can do what's called a um, smart view. So if you want to have even two or three different views that you're using. So, for example, let's say with updated at the front, the reason why I put updated at the front is um, let's say that I'm doing a Facebook lead generation campaign. I'm going to want to see who I had the most recent activities with, and that would probably be updated. Like either they did something or I did something, but either way, it's going to be top of the uh, top of the list. And so I want to see that immediately. But if I'm doing something like um, sending out a newsletter or emailing, you know, uh, birthday cards or something like that, um, I might want to have tags in the front so I could see who are the contacts with the birthday tag or with this specific tag, you know, so it just depends on what kind of um, what would you're trying to do. So you can have a few different save searches and then you'll see this drop down list and you'll have all of your different smart views and you just name them whatever it is. So this is the birthday smart view. This is the newsletter smart view. This is the Facebook lead generation smart view. Um, and then you can have your default view of whatever, whatever you want it to be. And so that's that's kind of a way that you can keep this uh, organized a little bit better. Um, as of right now, you can only see 10 at a time, but you can do this drop down and see up to 500. Um, so and you can't do any more than that. <laughs> I'm not sure why, but um, you can't do any more than 500. Um, I think eventually they'll have they'll have more. Um, but and it's not really a huge issue unless you're wanting to select everybody, right? Because if you want to select everybody right now, I can only select 10 at a time. 
if I want to select 500, I can select 500. But if I want to send everybody uh, an email using this, this page right here, I can add to an email list or I can add to a smart plan. I can only do 500 at a time, um, which also isn't a problem if you have less than 500 contacts in your database. But uh, as you guys start working, you're going to get more. Um, and, and, you know, Jennifer, you said you had 50 in now, but you, maybe you have way more than that. I don't know. Um, so that's something to, uh, to consider as well. Um, you might have to break it up into to pieces if you're trying to do a big bulk action. Um, okay, let me think if there's anything else that would be good to cover. Hold on, hold on, one second, one second. Mm -hmm. I got a question. Yeah. Can you go back over for how to get to the bulk actions really quick? Oh, yeah, yeah, I sure. See that sure. one more time. Yeah, so as long as you have at least one item ticked here on these boxes, this will okay. appear. If you have nothing selected, nothing's going to appear. Yeah. Um, so Got it. Just that. All right, that's actually, good enough. Um, there's some cool things that you can do here. Um, now, are, are either of you guys on Teams? No, I, I'm not allowed to be on a team right now because I'm okay. fairly new. Okay, that's fine. Um, if you were, no, I do have a PC coach. Yeah. Okay. I, I just left my team Okay. Well, because it, well, it, because it wasn't really a team. It was just like a group of agents that worked solo. So I was like, I'll just be solo. Yeah. <laughs> so. that makes sense. I, I, I can understand that. Well, um, it doesn't apply to you guys, but you can change accounts. So if I have my entire database, so you can see right now I'm in my account. But if I come over here, I can switch. I'm, I'm a, a staff member here at Greater Lexington. So I, we have our own team account, you know. Um, so the two contact databases are totally separate, okay? Um, in, in the fact that if I tried to go over to my team account and do a smart plan on this test uh, contact, it wouldn't work. It wouldn't see that contact, right? So that can be a problem in teams, right? So you can select all these and you can actually push all of these uh, to a team database, right? Now, one good thing to note about that, doing that action is these are my contacts. If I push them over to the team database, they'll be in the team database, but they're still my contacts. So if I ever decide to leave that team, they come back with me. They just pull them straight out of that team account and I get to keep them, right? So um, it's a way that you can put all of your contacts into the team database, but kind of retain that ownership because, you know, like if I sell house to my dad, are they going to keep that contact? No way. You know, <laughs> my friends, my, my family, things like that. So, um, you know, just one thing to note when it comes to that. But there are a lot of other bulk actions that you can do. Um, you know, let's see here. The smart plans. Or you can send a bulk text message, add tags in bulk, um, you know, do a bunch of stuff. So it'd be good to maybe go through that. Um, I want to go over, oh, actually, any other questions? Okay, cool. Just no. Yeah, just shout out if you if you do. Um, all right, so I'm going to click on one of these contacts, and this is me. This, I made this for myself just to do tests, uh, just different tests. This is the contact card. And, um, you know, if uh, I don't know if your market centers are doing this, but our market center, we do all of our compliance and we do all of our commissions through command. And so whenever that's the case, you want to kind of do everything through command. It makes it a thousand times easier to create the contact in command, create the opportunity in command. They do the compliance and the commissions to command. It makes it a lot more streamlined and, and easier. But um, so you can see this is the layout of the contact card. You have, you can mark it as a lead or you can unmark it as a lead. Um, <clears throat> you know, if you start working with the person, you can do that. This is their health score. So the more data that you have in here, the higher the health score is going to be. It's just so you can gauge um, if you need more information from your, your contacts and better utilize your database. Um, this is a tag, 
you know, you can add tags and you'll see all of them here. These are the neighborhoods. Um, if there's a lead source here, here's the neighborhoods. With neighborhoods, if you want to add neighborhoods, it's um, fairly simple. You can search for the neighborhood here. If you can't remember what the neighborhood name is, but you know the address that you want, click find on map and you can type in, you know, I don't know, we'll type it in there and then it will show you the neighborhood that it's in right there, Pleasant Ridge there. You can select multiple neighborhoods if you want to. And if I hit save, then all of those neighborhoods would add to that, that client. And so that'd be useful, you know, if they're selling a house in a particular neighborhood, that data is associated with their contact. And if you, in the future, you want to send out a smart plan for neighborhood nurture, which would send them neighborhood information every single month or a bi-monthly one, you could do that and it will automatically know which neighborhood to do because that neighborhood is assigned. Um, that's something that I always talk to the agents about setting it up because it doesn't take much effort at all. Send it to every person in your entire database. Set them up on a monthly neighborhood nurture or a bi-weekly or it's twice a month. And it will just continue to send until the end of time unless they you know, say uh, unsubscribe or something like that. It's just an easy way that you can have those 12 or 24 touches that year um, without really having to do anything. So, um, <clears throat> so that's useful. Here's all the additional contact information that you can see down here, social profiles, all that. Now, that's the left side, right? Any questions about the left side of the contact database? Any good? Now the right side, this one is the, for me, this is the fun side, right? Right off the bat, you've got the timeline. So this is any interaction that you've ever had with this person is going to be tracked here. <clears throat> so um, if your email is associated to command, you're gonna see email exchanges you've had with them. Um, you can see uh, notes that you created for them. You can see when they subscribe to neighborhoods, um, you could see saved searches and things like that that are created. So this will give you in chronological order, basically any interaction that you've had with them. If you're using Twilio, it'll even track text messages that you've sent through Twilio. Um, again, emails and um, <clears throat> all in chronological order. Now with another cool thing about this, the timeline is, uh, are you guys familiar with the uh, the consumer app, the, the KW buy and sell homes app. No, not so I'm much. Not. The Kelly app or the KW? It's a it's a KW app, and it's actually it's not an agent. It's not for the agent. It's for the consumers. It's for the client, your guys' clients, right? Is it the um, one that we share, the red and white one? That's the one. Um, so the cool thing about that app, and hmm. and I'm I'm. I've been tracking the technology of, of command for the past two years. And so I've seen, uh, I remember when that was initiated and I remember they, they struggled a bit at the beginning, but it's actually transformed into a very solid um, home search app, right? Now, the cool thing about it is, is if they go to your website or if they go to the phone and they create an account and link you as their agent, you'll also see anything they do in that app on this timeline as well. If they look at a house, you'll see what house they looked at. If they saved the house, you'll see which house they saved, um, like favorited. Um, if they ask you, because um, you can ask your agent a question through the app. If, if they ask a question, you'll see it. If they request a home tour, you'll see it. Um, all of that's going to happen on this timeline, again, in chronological order. So if you're, if you're using the other parts of this, the website, and if you're using the phone app, um, when you get new clients, you can already get a good picture of what they're interested in, what kind of homes they're looking at, what kind of areas they're looking at without having to interact with them in any way. And so you can kind of have a jump on them when you, when you actually sit down and say, hey, let's start looking at houses. I found some that might fit your, um, your needs or, or what, you're like, what you like, things like that. So it's a really good tool to use this timeline. It's, it's really cool. Um, you can add activities as well. 
Now, I will say this, you mentioned, Jennifer, the Kelly app, and the Kelly app um, at this point in time is not really useful for a lot of things um, because it's, it's going to become something better. They're going to transform it into a more like a command mobile, like a command on your phone type thing. Um, but there is one thing that Kelly is very good about, and that's um, push notifications. So when these things are happening in commands, there's no way for you to tell that they're happening um, unless you're sitting in front of your computer, unless you have Kelly, right? And Kelly will notify you on your phone that those things are happening. For me, that's one of the only things that is good for Kelly, but that's super important because if they're um, looking at a home and they, they favorite that home, that's good information to know. You could get a ping about that on your phone. Um, and it applies for other things too. Like we, we spoke about Facebook lead generation. When that new contact drops in from a Facebook campaign, you get notified on your phone immediately that that happened, but it, it's all done through Kelly. So I kind of look at Kelly as like a notification center. So when I get a ping from Kelly, I don't even go to Kelly. I just go right to commands, right? Um, with, with command, we don't have a mobile version of command. I, there will be one eventually. I, I'm very confident, but um, we don't right now. But one good thing about the way it was built is it's built to be mobile friendly. So you can actually go to commands on like open up Safari or Chrome and you can go on your phone and it, it looks all right. It's not, um, you don't have to scroll around to see different parts of the page. It's actually set up really well and it's it's optimized for mobile phones. So if you wanted to go to command on your phone, you could. And there are a lot of things that you can do um, on command through your phone. You can see that it's kind of set up in blocks. Like you have the left side and you have the right side. On the phone, they just take those two blocks and they shift them on top of each other. So it's kind of, it makes it a little bit easier to, to, to work with. You know, it's, it's like that with most of the different um, applications. You can see they're all like set up in blocks. So we have a block here, you have a block on the side. When you look at it on your phone, they just kind of shift them in line like this. And so you could just scroll down your phone. So it looks all right and it works. It works all right. Um, all right. Any questions about that timeline? <clears throat> okay. Good. There are a few other things that we have here um opportunities um one useful thing i think about the contact card versus going into opportunities themselves is if you know who you're working with sometimes it's easy to just find them in your contacts and then go over because you guys are going to start getting a lot of opportunities now you're going to start working with a lot of people and sometimes it's hard to organize so you can either find them in opportunities here or you can find them over here on the side of your opportunities uh, section of your your contact card and that sometimes can be easier like, oh, I'm working with David. I'm just going to find the contact and then go here to opportunities rather than trying to find which opportunity um, I'm looking at in the opportunities database. It's also in chronological order. And so it's going to be the most recent opportunity is going to be at the top. So that makes it easier. Yeah. Yep. OK. Um, Smart plans, um, you can add them to smart plans here. Um, so that's useful if you just wanted to do a one off. I'm going to add this one contact to a smart plan. Um, we'll talk about tasks a little bit more in a second. Now, notes, just notes that you can make. If you have something you think of that you need to do, you can add a note here. Um, and then you'll see all your notes here. Then last on the list here, we have save searches. This is actually kind of cool. Um, create a save search here. <clears throat> you can, it's a little bit limited on what you can, what criteria you can put. You can either search by neighborhood or you can search by zip code, right? And um, let's just look at neighborhood real quick. So we're gonna go over here. So I believe you can do multiple neighborhoods as well. So yeah, so you can select a bunch of different neighborhoods if you want a larger area. Um, a few people I, I've heard complain a little bit that oh, I have to, if I wanna do you know, specific sections, 
Um, I have to click on a bunch of different areas. Yeah. Um, you could also do zip code. That's a larger uh, geographical area. Um, so either of those you can do. Um, but the cool thing about this, let's do, let's do, uh, that's fine. Okay. Um, you can basically set up a safe search for your, your contact, right? So you put in a price, the min, the max, keywords, property type, listing status, beds, bathrooms, all that, right? And basically any new home that comes onto the KWS, our, our MLS system is going to be sent to them. Now, it, it, you can set up how often, it could be daily, it could be weekly, it could be monthly, or it could be immediately. So whenever a new listing pops up, it shoots them an email real quick. And I'll be honest, this is a very useful marketing strategy here because <clears throat> Um, as, as a consumer, I, I bought a home a couple of months ago and uh, I would get emails from Zillow and I still get emails from Zillow. And even though I've already bought a home, I still look at those homes and I'm like, oh, that's good. That's a nice home. Oh, that looks cool. Oh, look at the price on that. And so I like seeing it. It's I don't know why. But I think all of us, all of humanity, we have this this weird thing where people show us a, a list of houses we want to look at. It. I don't know what it is. But um, <clears throat> so um, that's essentially what you're doing here. And Zillow uses that marketing tactic super effectively. And you can set it up here too. Um, ours is gonna be a little bit more limited than Zillow's because ours is newer. Um, as time goes on, ours is gonna get better and better and, um, and we'll be a real contender for sure. Um, but let it pop in their email every day or, or a couple of times a day. And I don't think people will unsubscribe from it. Um, because I am, I don't like getting subscriptions for anything, but I still haven't unsubscribed from that Zillow thing. And I don't know why some weird psychological thing. I don't know what it is. Um, now the coolest thing about this, right? The coolest thing for me about this is I actually worked with an agent and they set me up on a safe search and I got emails and it was nice getting the emails. It has your branding on it. It's going to have your face on the email. Kind of cool. Um, but when I went into my phone app, I was testing my phone app, I was showing people the ones that were from the safe search, the homes that are from the safe searches, they show up instead of being a little black dot. Um, let me actually open this up. I think the dot has the price in it. Let me just open it to make sure if I can find it. There we go. <clears throat> okay, yeah, in the app, it's got like a little speech bubble with the price of the house, right? And it's really just the first three numerals. So if it's 500,000, it says 500K. So it's a little black text bubble thing for all of the houses on it. But if it's from a safe search, it's going to show up as red and it's going to say like agent selection or something like that. And it was, it was kind of funny because I knew the agent had set me up on the safe search. I knew that that had happened and I knew that I had walked them through it, right? And then a day later, when I checked, I started seeing those dots. My first reaction was, was like, oh, she picked a house for me. She absolutely didn't. I, I did it. Right? But that was my gut reaction. That was the first reaction that I had, which that's kind of cool. If that's the case for me, that's probably going to be the case for all of your clients. They're going to say, oh, but, hey, they picked a house out for me. That's neat. That's That was nice. You know, um, so that's a cool thing. And, and that's. You know, I mentioned Zillow has a bit more of a, a robust safe search than, than ours is, but it's those little things that make a big difference, right? Um, and that's why using all these systems together is kind of important um, because that little touch right there can make a big difference for your client, even though it's not really a big deal at all or to you. Um, so just, uh, just kind of a neat little feature that safe search. I like it. I think it's cool. Um, all right. Any questions about what we've gone over so far? Okay, good. Oh, yeah, go ahead. oh okay, we're good. Um, <clears throat> all right. Um, let's talk briefly about tasks. Um, so we'll, we'll look at tasks here. And I'll just add a quick task. This isn't super 
um, super complicated, but there are some things that are um, good to know. Um, we'll do a test task. You can do all day if you untick that. Let's see, we'll select tomorrow. You can select a time as well. Um, it's up to you. And, and this is another instance where you'll actually receive the notifications of these tasks through Kelly. So having that Kelly app and having being signed into it is, is pretty useful. You enter in the description. You can add a hyperlink, which is just a, some kind of URL at the top if you need to. I haven't really thought too much about that hyperlink. I don't know what you would put in there, but um, if there's some kind of task that's associated to a website, maybe, then you'll, you'll put that in there. Um, and then I'll just, just real quick, put this together, create task. So we have test task, and there we go. So you've completed the task just by checking that box there. You can also snooze. So if I hit snooze, I can push it for you know a certain amount of days, or I can push it to a specific date if I want to. Um, and you can also archive it, right? So I'm actually gonna come over here, right under contacts is the tasks widget here. So I'm gonna click on that. And you can see all of these past due um, tasks here. So I'm just going to click one, say it's done, complete task, just so you can see. Uh, now I have the check and it's struck, uh, struck through. So we know that task is completed, right? So this is just a good way that you can add a list of, of things that you're doing. You can keep on track. It's kind of like a, a digital virtual assistant here to keep you um, in check. Um, you can see tasks to do, you can see completed one, archived ones, and expired ones. Right, so you can see all of those. Um, you can show your tasks for all time. You can show specific date ranges. Um, and that's it for the context. You also have tasks associated to opportunities. And these are actually kind of neat. Um, I'll show you that real quick. <clears throat> So if I go, let's just go to a random opportunity section. All right, so you can see that the opportunity tasks are broken up in a couple of different ways. Um, we have tasks that are associated to the different phases here. And then we have tasks that are specific to the contact, okay? So if I were to, um, Let's click on this one here. There's no tasks involved. So we can go through the different ones. You can add an item, you know, do the same thing. Um, and then we see now we have one task. So zero out of one tasks are completed. Um, if I move this guy back, you can see that that task went away because I'm no longer in that stage. Right, so that's a way that you can keep track of, of the different phases and, and stages and things. Now, if I hit, let's see here, right here, let's go back to that, so I'll show you. If I click on edit stages right up here, you can actually add items that are particular to the different stage, okay? And so, um, if I make it specific to the contact by clicking on that contact card, then it's only going to be applied to that one contact. If I put it in this staging um, here, then it'll be applied to any person at that point who goes into the staging category, right? So if you have a set amount of things that you do for each stage, you can just make a checklist for each one of them. And as you drag your contacts through the different spots of the opportunities, those tasks will automatically be assigned to them. But if you have one contact where there's a very specific, unique task you need for them, you can add it right here. And then you just add an item and you add that specific one. Um, this is kind of cool here, this client update. Um, what it basically does is when this task is complete, it will send an email to your client telling them that the task has been completed as well. So if there are things that you 
need to do and that you want your client to be notified when they've been completed, then you can pre-set up all of those tasks. And then as you just drag your contact through the, the database, and check off those tasks as they're happening, they'll receive those notifications. Hey, just letting you know that we talked to the home inspector, uh, home inspector and you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, and you're, you're good to go. So um, that's all I can think about to cover for tasks themselves. It's like I said, it's pretty simple. Um, do you guys have any questions about the tasks? No. All right. Simple enough. Well, um, that's pretty much all I got today for tasks and, um, and for contacts. Do you have any overall, just general questions you'd like to ask? I do. I do. Um, and specifically um, in the opportunities portion, uh, I'm actually in that in that phase right now with the um, offer that I have. And I just got one quick um, one question about when you do go under contract and the um, offer is accepted, you go to the um, offers and um, and you do I select accept or do they ex do they select accept on their I don't I don't have Yeah, that's a good question. Um, so <laughs> let's go there real quick. Let me go to one. <clears throat> and I'll uh, I'll show you kind of how that works here. Change response. Okay. Um, so this right here is a listing, and so all of these different offers are going to be buyers who have sent offers to to in theory my client. Um, and so the benefit of doing them all here is you've got a list of every single offer that's been made. And I, I don't know about real estate law too well. Um, I'm not an agent, I'm not a broker, but you have to present every offer that's, that's given. Um, you can't like not show this offer and show. So you could, in, in theory, if you're going to use this to show the offer to your client, you could put all of them in here and then we can go, yeah. um, select all and then compare offers and then it will send them you can email it to them or you can download this but it will send them basically um a list of everything so everything about the offer the summary the pros the cons all that stuff they'll see it and then they make an educated decision based on your suggestions um i think we can see what Got it looks like I don't know how to, I don't remember how to see it. There's some way that you can actually see a preview of it. Let's see. Oh, here, it's a little eyeball. So this is basically what it's gonna look like. Now mine's a test, so you you guys put in better pictures and yours will look better for sure. But um, it's got image, name, blah, blah, blah. Compare offers, and so you have this offer one, offer two, offer three, offer four, offer five. Then I can respond to the email and say, "Hey, you know what? I like offer two the best. I think that's the best." And then you, as an agent, go in and click accept on that offer. So. Oh, okay, simple. Okay, got it. I didn't know what it was used for. I was just wondering. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty useful, and not only that, but you have a digital thing that says, "Hey, these are all the offers that I received. They were all put in here. They were all submitted to the client." Um, got it okay cool cool any any other questions okay very cool all right well thank you guys for for coming to the class um if you have any other questions in the future you know feel free to reach out to me um you can get my info from uh from uh josh um or whatever <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, thank you very much, David. Mm -hmm. Nice thank to meet you. you guys. Talk to you later. Bye. Okay. Bye. All right.